We remind the one who is still alive. The one who believe even after death, they're still alive. One of the best gifts is death. Many of you are a Farsi. I cannot go into that now. But, so, the Holy Prophet was said to, to him by his uncle, he was said that, Love Ali ibn Talib and your Ahlul Bayt. Second thing, he said, Whenever I used to do a lot of salawat, the salawat also helped me in the hereafter. And the third thing that helped me, he said, was giving water to anyone who was thirsty. You know, even for every, you know, like in Arabic the term, I'm, I'm not sure if there is a phrase that I can use in English, for every warm liver that you may cool, there is reward. Not a probably believer, but every warm liver that you cool down, even if of a disbeliever, even if of an animal, even if of a pig or a dog, you make it cool, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you don't know how much I love that. Even though if it was an animal, it still had a warm heart, and you have that warm liver, you cooled it down by giving them water. This is one of the most rewarding acts. On a dinner table, never drink water yourself. Never. Because the thawab is so high, always ask the other person, can you give me water? And when they want to drink, say, ah, I'll give you water. There's a hadith that says with your parents, do not make them do anything for you. But if you want the reward of giving you water to go to anyone, then give it to your parents. That's how much rewarding it is, giving water. One of the most rewarding acts. But now, the, the topic is not water, but... <laughs> so, now the, the salutation of the Holy Prophet is a way of... The way of showing your love to the Holy Prophet. How do you, how should you send your salutations? The Holy Prophet says in Sahih Bukhari, La tusallu alayya salat al-batra. Do not send a tailless salawat on me. You know, batra is from abtar. You remember? Mm. Akbar and Asghar Sobara. Yes? Yes. Abtar. Inna a'atayna ka ka fasalli ka 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 inna shana ka huwal abtar. And the feminine is batra. Abtar is basically a tailless animal. And what the Arabs would do is they would cut the tail off the horse or the uh, the mule that they were using in the war so it doesn't disturb them while they're fighting. And that was that animal was called Abtar. The Arabs used to always humiliate a person whose children had died within his lifetime, especially his sons, and they would call them Abtar. That's what they used to call the Holy Prophet, and he was badly hurt because his sons died. All of his sons died, so they say Abtar. But you see, the Holy Prophet had so much patience he did not complain against them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the secrets of the heart. So he said, Inna a'atayna kal kawtha. We have given you kawtha. Which is Fatiha to Zahra salam on the head. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Muhammad al-Qali Muhammad. So the Holy Prophet said, Do not send any of these salawats on me. In Sayyid Bukhari it says, The Holy Prophet was asked, Umm salatu al-Batra, what is the tailless salawat ya Rasulullah? He said, Whenever you send salutations on me, but do not include my progeny. And you know what he wrote after that? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salutations of be upon him. He did not say Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Even after mentioning the hadith, he had such a bad habit, he still mentioned him without his ahl. You know, some, sometimes it becomes habitual of no, you know, leaving someone out, you know. So even after mentioning the hadith, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, you have to you know, in this particular place at least, remember the Ali, which the Holy Prophet wants you to remember. And the last part before we, we end here. Is there What are the effects of love? I'll mention the story myself. It's not complete there. What are the, you know, there was this person, what are the effects of love? You do not have mistrust on the one who you love. Yes? The one who you like, you know, and love, you always trust him with everything. You have something precious, he said, you keep it, please. A person went to the masjid to pray namaz and he had this bowl of uh, yogurt. And he left it outside so he's going to quickly pray namaz and come back and go home with the, with the yogurt, you know. So he went inside and he only saw was leading and he quickly did namaz and he came out and, and he saw a dog running. It had a mark on its face of yogurt. So he turned around and looked in his in the bar that he was having, that there is a mark on top of it as well. You know, someone has touched it. He said, it must have been the dog. So he said to him, what do I do with the yogurt? 
Is it Najis? Should I, should I throw it away? Imam said, no, it's not Najis. It is still Tahir. He said, but I saw a dog. He said, did you see the dog put his mouth in it? He said, no, I didn't see it. He said, don't, just trust me. It's Tahir. He said, no, I saw a dog with a mark of yogurt on his face and I see there is something missing from here. So he just threw away all the yogurt. You know, this is, this is rough, it's haram. You shouldn't have done that. He said, no, but I saw the dog myself. He said, you didn't see the dog put the mouth in. He said, no, but how can I, you know, yeah, I, don't, I, I can't accept this. How can you not accept it from Imam al-Islam? Even if you did see the dog put the bath and Imam al-Islam said no, then say no. <laughs> you know, look, what happened to him? The bad thing that happened to him that I want to mention, some of you may not like it, but this is what happened to him. One day he was slaughtering an animal, you know, a sheep, because it's eating, so he was, you know, in the bush slaughtering an animal. Suddenly the people said, oh, there's a murder, there's a murder. And he had just left the animal, holding a knife, blood dripping from his hands, the one who was murdered, you know, the, the murderer had gone. The people said, you are the murderer. He said, no, I, th I just came. He said, you are the one. You've got the knife and you've got the blood dripping from your hands. So they all took him and they said, kill him. They said, no, no just wait, take me to Imam Ali As soon as he went in, Imam Ali said, do you remember? <laughs> Those years back, when I told you that dog did not touch it. Because you distrusted the Imam, Allah gave you this test. You know? This only happened to you because you had distrusted. You know, you didn't trust me then. He said, well, Yali, you know that means. He said, I didn't see you do it. And I didn't see you not do it. He said, no, please. <laughs> you know, how you can imagine what he must be going through, you know, these people are going to have me for murder. Imam Islam said, um, my son Hassan ibn Ali will decide. Why? Because, you see, Ali, Imam Ali Islam does not want to be a side. You know, he doesn't want to take any sides. Because he knows, you know, and this person will be saying, He's probably taking it out because what I said to him. So he said, no, my, husband, my son Hassan will decide. He said, the person who is in this house, he had a slave. Did you all know that? They all said, yes. He said, where is the slave? So they all went in and they said, ah, the slave is missing. He said, try and search for the slave. He'll tell you the truth. So they all went after him and someone caught him that he was leaving the town. He was outside and he was brought back. When he came back, he said, it's true, this man did not murder the, my owner. I murdered him. But because he had attacked and I wanted to defend myself and it was an accident. Imam Hassan said, both of these people are let free. One, because he did not murder and the second one, only murdered for his defense. They all turned to Imam he said, that is the decision that I would have taken if my son has given. So you see, love should continue from one to the other and that's what are the effects of it. When you love, you trust them. When the Imam says, don't take this, don't do this, you should trust, don't ever. And that's how many of the ulama say, you know, we are unlucky that we don't have the Imam in our time and we are lucky as well not to have them. Because if we had them, how many of us will be? Like Malik Ashtar and Abu Dhalil Ghaffari and Salman Farsi, people like them. And how many of us will be like the people, you know, the, the one who had, the, the, you know, saw the dog and the yogurt? You know? We don't know. The best thing is we are hidden. Adhra Misbah used to say one thing, you know, in, in his lecture. With his sermon of Imam Islam, he said, Oh people, you all say bad to Muawiyah. But most of you are worse than Muawiyah, or people of Kufa. Why? Because most of you never got a chance to prove that how bad you are. You never got the, the throne. You never were ruling. So your sins are hidden. Until you're put through a trial, you're hidden. Shaitan, all the angels used to say, no, Ya Allah, he should come to the, to the heavens. Allah said, no, he doesn't deserve to. They said, no, he does more about it. Bring him. Okay, you want to. Until he went through a trial, everyone thought he was good. Many of us are like that. Until we go through trials, we are all hit and thank God for that. And as soon as the trial comes, we think, why me? Why is it going to happen to me? So Allah